Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is open the lock. You have a lock in front of you with four circular wheels. Each wheel has 10 slots, 0 to 9. The wheels can rotate freely and wrap around. For example, we can turn 9 to be 0 or 0 to be 9. So it just wraps around um, this array here. Each move consists of turning one wheel, one slot. So 0 to 1 counts as one move and 0 to 9 counts as one move. Now the lock initially starts at 0, 0, 0, 0, and a string representing the state of the four wheels, okay? And you are given a list of dead ends, uh, meaning that if the lock displays any of these codes right here, that means the wheels of the lock will stop turning and you will not be, um, you will be unable to open it. So kind of like locks if you get into this state here. Now given a target, representing the value of the wheels that will unlock the lock, return the minimum number of turns required to open the lock and negative one if it is not possible uh, so we have a bunch of dead ends we know we're going to start at zero 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 and we want to see what's the minimum path to get to zero two zero two so immediately you might think oh we could probably write something recursively here um, and we certainly could but the problem is how do we represent this and they kind of tell us uh, in the hint that we can think of this problem as a shortest path problem on a graph uh, say that there are a thousand nodes, each one of these representing all the representations from 0, 0, 0 999, uh, and there's going to be an edge, you know, uh, and usually we can go to eight directions. We can go move up, down from the first digit, up, down the second digit, so on and so forth. Uh, as long as it's not a dead end, we can go to that path, right? And we just want to find the shortest path. So there's no weights here with the edges. They're bidirectional. Uh, it's just an edge. So really all we need to do is some sort of breadth first search probably is the best here. Uh, we could do that for search, but that, that would end up being um, uh, more time because we have to find every single path. So, okay, here's kind of what we're going to do. First thing we'll do is create an adjacency list. And this is going to represent like a state saying from 000 to all the different paths we can go to. So here we can see we can go to like uh, here and we can go to like 9000 and so on and so forth. Uh, after we have our adjacency list, then we're just going to do a breadth first search. We'll do a breadth first search starting at the target, and um, while we're creating this adjacency list, we'll keep track of the dead ends, and we'll just do the same thing here. If, if it's a dead end, um, actually, do we need to do that here? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, we don't need to really wor worry about the dead end at that point. Uh, basically, if we're able to get out, get out of our breadth first search and not get to the target, then we can return a negative one here. Um, so, you should buckle up, this is going to be a long one. Uh, let's first start by creating our adjacency list. And because these are strings, these aren't integers, uh, it gets a little bit tricky to create it. Uh, so I'm going to create a temporary array uh, called nums. I'm also going to uh, make this dead ends into a set to make it a little more efficient. And what we'll do is say for i in range of 10,000, we're going to add it to our nums. But Remember, we have to have four positions, right, with zero, leading zeros. Uh, just so, just kind of a hack. I'm just going to say zero 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 plus a uh, string representation of this i. I'll call this candidate, and then we are going to add to our nums the candidate from the fourth position onward, um, from the end to the fourth position. So that'd be negative four all the way out. Okay, so let's make sure this looks good. Okay, so that basically looks like what I'm trying to do. All right, so now we need to write our adjacency list, right? So for uh, candidate in nums, uh, what do we need to do? Well, we have to check all four digits, right? Let's say four, let's call it i in range of four, and we want to move up or down. And remember, we're going to do a mo we have to do the wraparound. If it's like um, a nine and we increase it by one, we don't want 10, we want zero, right? So to do that, we can just, um, use the modular function. And what I'll do is say four digits in, uh, let's say create a list. We'll have two values here because you can go up and down. We'll take our candidate i, whatever position this is, and we are going to convert it to an integer. We're going to add one and we are going to do a modulo 10. So let's see. 10. 
something like that. And the same thing could be done on the other side, but we just subtract one instead of adding one. Okay, so now we have our digit. Uh, now we want to create um, our actual number here. So this would be, I guess I'll call it next. This will be equal to uh, take our candidate and we'll go up to the ith position. We're going to add a string representation of our digit here. And we're going to add candidate now starting from i plus one all the way to the end. So this will be our next. And as long as our next is not in the dead ends, we'll add it to our JNC list. So if next not in dead ends, we're going to add to our JNC list here, uh, append, oh, say, candidate, append, next. OK, so let's make sure this is JCC list looks OK. Uh, I'm going to just check for 0, 0, 0 here. See if that looks like it's supposed to. There should be 8. Oh, I have to first define this, obviously. So this would be a default dict of a list. And let's look at this. So we go up, down from 0, like uh, 0, 0, 0 to 1,000 to 9,000. Uh, 100 to 900, so on and so forth. So that looks good. It looks like we're doing it correctly. All right, so now that we have our agency list, all we need to do is, is our breadth for search. So let me first clean this up a little bit. Um, okay, so to do our breadth for search, let's create a queue. And I'm going to first start off with the target or the beginning, which is 000, and the number of steps that we took. So, so far it's going to be zero, right? So while queue, what do we want to do? Well, let's first pop off our candidate as well as the number of steps from our queue, pop left. And the very first thing is if this candidate is equal to target, just return steps immediately, right? Okay, otherwise we want to add to our queue all the next targets here. So for next in agency list, um, candidates, if next, not in visited. I'm going to create a visited set here so that we don't do anything circular. We're going to add to our queue again. Let's add the next and we'll say steps plus one. Now, <clears throat> if we're able to get out of this loop, that means there was no path to get to our target. So we're just going to have to return negative one. So let me make sure this looks good. I'm going to create my visited thing here. And also make sure to add to our visited the next each time we see it. So let's see if this works. Okay, that looks like it's working. So let's go ahead and submit it. And uh, I forgot there is an edge case. If um, our dead end starts with 000, that means that we can't have entered in here, right? So I'm just going to take care of that here. If 000 in that ends, then return negative one because really none of this matters if we can't even start at our tar start position, right? So uh, let's try that again. And there we go, accepted, like barely, barely got accepted. So why was this slow? I mean, it did get accepted, but um, could we do better than this? And the reason why it's much slower than a lot of the other solutions is because we waste a lot of time creating this adjacency list. If you think about it carefully, there's a lot of wasted paths that we're calculating for that we're never going to enter in the first place. Um, so what we might do instead of creating this adjacency list with which wastes a lot of space and wastes a lot of time, why don't we just generate our paths, the next candidates that we can go to like on the spot, because those are the only ones that matter. Right, so okay, let, let's try that. Let's um, instead of saying for next in our agency list, we'll say um, we'll add it here. We'll say for for i in range of four and for digit in candidates, we'll create our next right here. And as long as next is not in the dead ends and it's not in the visited. Then we'll add it 
to our queue. And that would mean that we don't actually need any of this stuff here. We can just get rid of this. Um, let's make sure this works. Not visited. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Let's go and submit it. And there we go. That's a lot faster. And the reason, like I mentioned, is we're not wasting all that time creating this adjacency list for all these paths that we're never going to enter in the first place. So we're kind of just generating it on the spot. Um, certainly make this a little bit cleaner if you like, but it works. So I'm going to keep it at that. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Uh, remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.